I'm Mary Caffey with the American Journal of Managed Care, and we're here today with Dr. Prakash Buyan, the Vice President of Clinical Development at Innovio. In the time of COVID-19, public health leaders tell us that the long-term solution is delivering an effective vaccine against the, the virus. At Innovio, Dr. Buyan is here to tell us about the company's efforts against COVID-19, as well as science to prevent rare but deadly genital cancers. Welcome, Dr. Buyan. Thank you, Mary. Um, and I appreciate the time today. Uh, we, we, we certainly have been uh, really immersed in, in these activities against COVID-19. Uh, but, but really, you know, I, 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 I'd like to take this time to talk to you uh, about cancer and really our efforts to uh, move our, our, our phase three and phase two programs uh, for VGX 3100, which is our, our lead uh, candidate of uh, DNA medicine approach uh, into, you know, eventually to the bedside. And one thing that uh, I think as we're in our uh, very unusual circumstances that, that we're all trying to do uh, uh, broadcasting from our home offices and working from our uh, sequestered at home, um, one of the things that, that I think I and our investigators and um, quite honestly our, our patients have um, remained focused on is trying to not lose sight that cancer is still a monster and that if we don't um, uh, continue our efforts towards trying to come up with treatment solutions for that, um, you know, that, that would be, uh, that would be a, a more than uh, a miss. Um, that, that must not happen. We must not lose our focus on other things that actually cause tremendous medical and, and psychological, physical impacts on, on patients. So um, for, for VGX 3100, we've really tried to keep that momentum going. It's been very challenging for everybody, right? Um, but uh, it's really the patient need that's, that's, that's allowed us to keep our focus. And, and so um, we have these, these two trials um, that we've just disclosed results, uh, preliminary results on, which, which are our, our phase two trials um, for vulvar dysplasia and um, for anal high-grade dysplasia. And so, you know, we can certainly, uh, I can tell you more about some of that, but we're pretty excited about uh, some of our preliminary findings. Okay, we certainly want to talk about both the uh, COVID-19 vaccine efforts and both of those trials. I absolutely want to talk about both of those things. Um, let's talk first about uh, your efforts with uh, Inovio and Ology Bioservices just received an $11.9 million grant to deliver vaccines with the military. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, well, I think we're, we're, we're trying in all efforts of our company to get funding for our DNA medicine platforms. Um, so we're, we're really uh, looking where we can um, to be able to empower our, our research programs. Um, so that is going to be pivotal in terms of helping us to develop um, our platform. Our platform is, is a DNA medicine platform, so we're, we're using that to try to uh, really direct the immune system. I mean, as an immunologist myself and as an infectious disease specialist, we have, we have learned so much about immunology over the last many decades. And we have learned, and if, and if this time, I mean, this particular time is probably, uh, an, uh, again, a, 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 an example of this. I mean, I think we all know uh, infectious diseases a lot more than we ever wanted to. Um, we know that a single virus can can paralyze our global community and um, and can can really be a very frightening thing. Now, this is something as an infectious disease specialist that I I've trained and had to be cognizant of my my uh, entire career life. Um, but what's exciting is that now we have an opportunity, an ability to use our tools at Inovio, uh, and and other companies are are obviously pitching in, trying as well. Um, we, we have to be able to use what we know about the immune system and about infectious diseases to be smarter about this and to come up with uh, modern tools to, to be able to develop therapeutics. So that's, that's you know, uh, and, and again, I, 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 I want to go back to the fact that, you know, we, we talk about coronavirus, it, it sort of perme permeates our entire life right now. However, we should remember that human papillomavirus is 
the number one cause of cancers caused by virus. It's the number one oncovirus in the world. And we have as yet not been able to put a dent um, in terms of the remaining um, cases of cervical cancer, anal cancer, and vulvar cancer. So it affects men's, men and women's health um, still quite, quite a lot um, in this 21st century. We need to do something about that. So, I mean, again, th that's why every day when, when, when I, I, myself, my team, we, we, we wake up uh, in our homes now and, and we work, um, we're focused on, on trying to move these programs forward. So your approach at Inovio is to develop what you call DNA medicines to trigger that immune dis response. Can you talk about this global approach that you have that, that, that go against many different conditions? Well, the nice thing about this platform is DNA is very, um, it's very facile. It's very easy to make, very easy to characterize, and which is why we were able to get into um, clinical trials very rapidly. Uh, and that's the kind of solutions we need because our, our, cur our current problems, um, they emerge immediately. I mean, uh, in December, we would have been having a very different conversation um, and, than, than today uh, as, as we sit in April. And, and I think we, we're excited about our platform because of the speed at which we can, we can develop things um, and, and be able to get into research trials. So right now, for example, um, with what we've seen in, in our phase two trials for VIN and for AIN, which are vulvar dysplasia, vulvar precancer, and anal precancer, um, we've seen a, a, a proof of concept, an initial proof of concept. Um, these are preliminary data, so we still have to see, and we will be reporting on, on complete trial data as we go through the year. Um, from that, our, our plans are to try to approach regulatory discussions and frame out um, what a full development program would, would look like going into phase three. Okay, so your lead candidate that you mentioned, VGX3100, um, you're in phase three trials for cervical dysplasia and you just re released those interim phase two results for precancer conditions uh, related to vulvar cancer. What are the highlights of those interim phase two results that are just released? Well, for vulvar cancer, what we saw, so, so we reported almost um, 50 on 50% of the data available, so we still have the rest of the trial to do, but on those data, what we've seen is um, that 80% of women had um, a, a, an average of a 60% reduction in their lesion area. So this is a disease, just for context, um, that um, uh, typically doesn't change um, for a period of years. Um, so, uh, and typically only 2% will spontaneously regress, um, as in uh, the lesion will go away without any treatment. The current treatments are surgery, which um, are disfiguring, painful, and psychologically devastating. And 50% of the time, the lesion just comes back again. So these, these patients, these women are, are, are um, really, you know, really focused and, and wanting um, a better solution. And we, we really owe it to them. We need to develop better solutions for them because the current solution of using a scalpel to cut out um, a viral particle makes no sense at all. Um, and, and unfortunately, we've been doing that for decades. It's time that we use, um, you know, a more intelligent um, approach and, and an immunologic approach against the virus, um, namely HPV. So, um, the fact that 80% had this um, uh, effect of, of a decrease in lesion area is very promising um, because that happened six months after the last treatment dose. And typically, uh, you would only see um, a, a disappearance of disease in 2%, for example, of women. And that wouldn't happen for years. So okay. you know, I, think, I think this is reassuring. It's telling us we're in the right direction. Okay. And are there similar results? Uh, for VGX3100 that look promising to prevent anal cancer? So for anal cancer, you know, uh, again, a, a very uh, unique disease, uh, unique population, uh, men and women. Uh, in fact, um, if you had to look at um, the proportion of the United States who get anal cancer, um, there are, are more women um, today who get anal cancer than men, 60% to about 40%. Um, and by the way, for these conditions, more than a thousand um, uh, will 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 um, um, uh, die of um, of cancer 
um, from vulvar and, and anal cancer um, just this year. That's the estimated number, and that hasn't changed for decades. So, but in this phase two um, um, study for, for AIN, which is about the same size in terms of trial, trial data, um, we saw half of the population respond um, where the HPV 16, 18 positive precancer disease actually um, went away. And that is, that is really in line with what we've seen with our um, cervical trial data, which is now in phase three. And I think, again, it's, it's very encouraging. And um, it's, it's the kind of thing that makes us, um, uh, it's what gets us up in the morning, you know, no matter where we have to do our work. Um, so it, it, it's, it, and again, as context, I think it's important to understand for these patients, um, it's surgery that they that they get, and they get that almost every six to eighteen months for their precancerous um, lesions, and half of the time the disease comes back, and so they're getting repeated surgeries in the in the uh, intraanal canal, which is painful, again psychologically devastating, and and honestly, it's all we have, but we need to do better, and and that's why we're we're doing this. So what's then, in managed care, we hear so much about um, the importance of quality measures and, and there's more and more emphasis on patient reported outcomes. So it sounds like there's a lot of potential through this vaccine to improve those measures and improve quality of life for patients. Absolutely. I mean, we actually have um, patient reported outcomes tools that, are, that we're using for, that we have in both of these trials. And we'll, we'll, we're actually collecting that information um, both uh, at the start of the trial, all the way through the trial. And um, we're actually seeking to develop a, a new tool. Um, there actually uh, is not, um, if you can imagine, there is not a PRO tool that is specific for vulvar disease uh, in particular. So we're actually seeking to actually, to actually model um, some existing tools and try to develop something that would be fit for this disease. But it again shows you that, um, I mean, I think patient reported outcomes are um, a, a, an evident need um, to be able to understand, measure, and improve. We don't even have appropriate tools in vulvar dysplasia, which shows you how neglected that field really is. And, and that, that's, again, that's another thing that just has to change. So even though these um, cancers are still relatively rare, they are becoming more common. So with a vaccine like this, what's the uh, potential to slow the trajectory and reduce health care costs along with improving quality of life? So I, I think um, that's a great question. And, uh, you know, what, what we're using, again, is a, a DNA medicine, this, this DNA medicine approach uh, to, to stimulate the immune system um, it's to also create a, uh, hopefully a systemic effect and not just a localized effect. So in other words, HPV is multi-zonal. It, it affects more than just the cervix. It affects often more than just the anal canal or the, um, or, or the vulvovaginal um, area and, 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 and head and neck area, for example. Those are the primary areas. A lot of patients have disease they don't even know about. And sometimes um, they, when they present, they present with outright cancer. So um, the earlier we can detect these things and treat them, which would be using, for example, v VGX 3100 would, would fit into that um, model that way, early detection and early treatment would allow um, us to, to then prevent some of these re repeat surgeries, these um, uh, instances where, where, where women and men are presenting with outright cancer, which is a much more difficult and costly um, burden on, on, the, on the healthcare system. So what are the next milestones we should be looking for with VGX 3100? So the next milestones um, will be the complete set of data for, for both of our phase two trials. So we have the, the vulvar precancer trial, the anal precancer trial. Um, and then uh, milestones from that will be regulatory discussions to frame out um, the following development program um, towards licensure and then um, uh, you know, obviously contingent on positive data, uh, and and then um, what we would also be looking at is our cervical program, which is as I said in phase three. So those are the sort of key pieces of data for for this particular product. Okay, and we came into this discussion talking about your uh, Novia's work um, in COVID nineteen, and I understand that 
your vaccine was tested in the very uh, the very first volunteer received the vaccine this week. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Yeah, we're really excited about that, and um, I think I think uh, we all need to be pulling uh, in this direction to get us out of um, the uh, pandemic. Yeah, and so when would we when would we be looking for some news about um, the results of the vaccine? The, the COVID well, vaccine. Well, this so this is the phase one trial. So um, uh, at, at, towards the end of the year, um, there would um, be targeted results from from this, and then that would allow us to also get into our phase two piece of it of development. Um, and uh, I think it's it's really at the end of the year that that we're we're aiming for. But um, obviously, we're aiming as fast as we can, um, and there and 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 we're not going to. We're, we're going to be relentless in terms of how we're doing this because we need to get out of this situation. Well, it's so much going on at, at Inovia. Thank you so much, Dr. Briand. Thank you for talking with us. Well, I appreciate it, Mary. You have a great day. Okay. And for more, visit our rare disease compendium on AJMC.com.